had the bye week last week, which gave, gave us a chance to really work on us and improving our team fundamentally. Sometimes, you know, it's, it's hard when you don't have a bye week to, uh, you, you're, you're preparing for the next opponent, what, they, uh, what the issues they, they pose. So, again, we got a chance to get a couple guys healthy. I anticipate we'll have uh, Dylan Bradley and Jalen Shard back. Um, so it's not it comes at a nice time right in the middle part of the season. So, you know, it was a good week. Guys, I thought really came out Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and practiced uh, with a great mindset. And we ran on Friday and let them get off for a couple of days. Uh, we're excited about uh, the next challenge as we continue to build this program and uh, taking on a North Texas team. That uh, one thing you know about a Dan McCartney coach football team, they're going to play hard. Uh, they they have physical players on defense and offensively they're struggling a little bit but they're going through a quarterback transition going to a more athletic guy and again uh, we anticipate a great challenge a well-coached football team um, they've got a really good staff they run a nice job recruiting we're going to have to play well uh, this week to give ourselves a chance to win and i anticipate we'll continue to improve what are some things um you know that we're focused on i guess uh, during the off week or if any if, if, if you know. Well, we took a little bit more individual time. We took a little bit more time to work on uh, the things we need to clean up. And then we worked, I wouldn't say exclusively against each other, but we, we took one period and did some North Texas work. But for the most part, it was just how do we do it better? Alignment, assignment, um, get you beat before mismatches. You know, we, we've got to do it better. We've got to get uh, clean up some of the things that we can control just to give ourselves a chance to win because Good football and playing your rear ends off for each other are a powerful thing. And uh, not turning it over, not giving up explosive plays. So how do we how do we do it better? Identical records for both teams. Uh, both you guys looking for your first conference win. Uh, what does that kind of do for you, knowing that both teams are kind of in that same same mindset per se? Well, I mean, again, it's we played some good opponents. I mean, so the, so that's been a little bit of a of a tough deal for both teams. But the reality is, is it's about us. And I'm sure he's going to say the same thing about them. How do we do it better? Irrespective of who we play, sure there's certain things schematically on both sides of all the special teams that, that we're all going to have to clean up. But the reality is for us to continue to improve, how can we continue to do it better? And that starts with me as a head coach and then our assistants and, and moving forward. Um, and, and again, we've done everything we could in the last two games to kill momentum. Every time we've made a play, we've, we've had a setback in one phase or another. It hasn't been just one area. It's been in, in all areas. Uh, when we get to the point to where we're not doing those things and carry momentum over, then you'll see the, the, prog the progression that I think we're capable of making. But right now, we find a way to take a step back. That's what we tried to do this, this last week is how do we keep continuing on the momentum in a game and, and allow yourself to keep building on that and put the pressure on your opponent, which we're going to have to do this week on the road. Will there be... All that being said, will there be any uh, you know, major personnel no. changes or anything? We are who we are. We really don't have, we're not at the point yet in, in our process of building this program back up to where we have enough depth to where we can sit there and say, okay, and competition. Like I said, I anticipate Jalen Rashard will be back and will play for us. And I anticipate Dylan Bradley will be back. So the guys that have been injured, I anticipate that we'll have them back and, and play significant football for us. Uh, not counting Middle Tennessee, um, it's no secret the defense has been on the field a lot. Uh, the bye week helped them get their legs back underneath them, maybe a little bit. Well, some of that, um, some of it's been their own doing. I mean, you got to get off the field. I mean, third downs extend drives. So it's, it's a combination of us being able to run the ball better um, to be able to, you know, not get our defense exposed as much, but also we got to get off the field on third downs. That, that'll help us being more consistent offensively, us converting third downs, us running the ball better, and then defensively being able to get off the field. Having Jalen back will open up some of that um, perimeter screen. No doubt. Without having Jalen the, the, for the last five weeks, Jalen is a very good receiving back and a good third down back. Is our most experienced running back when it comes to pass pro and checking the ball down. We didn't have that. We had two freshmen and a sophomore that's more of a power back. So. That's where we anticipate that, that Jalen gives us an opportunity to utilize him a little bit more. On the running backs, though, you know, you, you track most everybody you got, but last couple of games it's kind of been headed forward. So how, how do you feel about 
at running back position at this point? It's fine. We'll see uh, come tomorrow if we have Tez, whether or not Tez will be ready. But uh, Edo's back being healthy. We've got to do we've got to do a better job of getting him involved. I know last week early on the road, our two young running backs both fumbled. One Tez got hurt on. So your natural reaction is to play the older guys. Now, George was the only older guy available, but if you're turning the ball over, you don't have a chance. So that's probably where we ended up more with George. But Edo's got to play, and Jalen's going to play, and and, uh, and George will play. All three of them will play this week. Turnover is a big story for North Texas as well, um, knowing that you may have an opportunity to capitalize off their mistakes. Um, what, what, does that, what does that give you, knowing that, that they have the chance to, to turn the ball over and give you guys some extra possessions? Well, every week's different. You know, I've been down that road. Every place I've been, it, you have a game or two, you know, every other year or somewhere where you, you end up turning the ball over like that. And uh, unfortunately for them, it happened on the road and it led directly to scores. So, but you, you can't count on that every week. I mean, that's going to be the number one focus is not turning the ball over. So, but from our end of it, that, that's how you win games. Don't turn it over, create turnovers. Get explosive plays, don't give up explosive plays. Convert on third downs, don't let them convert. Score touchdowns in the red zone, don't let them score. Don't give up lost yards plays, create lost yards plays. That's it. At the end of the day, the yards don't matter. It's a part of it, it's a byproduct of all those five things. So what were we better last week offensively? Better on third downs. We got explosive plays. Uh, we turned it over, which hurt us. So on the other end, we didn't do as well on third downs. We gave up explosive plays. You're not going to win when you do that. So those are all the areas that you've got to continue to focus on. Now, there's a lot of things that go into that, easier said than done. So um, the bottom line is, is is we've got to try to find a way to create turnovers and find a way not to turn it over. Speaking of um, you know, offensive production, it's been pretty nice the last couple, I guess, weeks. Uh, more along the lines of what you want to, over 500 yards. Um, is that a, you know, a product of the offensive line play being better? Nick having more time? Sure it is. Part of it is who we're playing, okay? More in our wheelhouse so we don't get exposed. Okay. Um, we've got Mike Thomas who's continuing to get better. It's week six. He just got with us in July. Uh, Casey Martin, who got with us in July. Kyle Foster, who got with us in July. A young, two young running backs, a sophomore running back that got hurt. So, and the offensive line, all of it collectively. And Nick's going to only get better. They're just going to grow together. And we saw teams that were four down teams that we see every day in practice. Um, and we've made some switches up front that have helped us be able to process. So, the, the better they've played, the more we've kept our quarterback upright, the better we've run the ball, the better chance it's given us a, to score. Does that give you some optimism going into the second half of the season? Sure it does. Yeah, any progress. Now, it, we've got to do it better earlier in the game. Uh, we, we found a way late in Rice to score. We found a way uh, later in the game. But ultimately, it's about points scored. It doesn't matter about the yards. You have to find a way to score. Last week, with all the success we had in the first half, we had 13 points. That's it. That's what we had. Or 12 points, excuse me. We had 12. Of all the opportunities we had, that's not enough. That's not enough for the opportunities. With the two turnovers and the two field goals, you took a lot of points off the board. It still comes down to scoring touchdowns when you get those opportunities. So do you see progress? Of course you do. We've got to find a way to do it better. Uh, the costly uh, false starts that hurt us and the turnovers, uh, you're going to you're going to struggle to, to score touchdowns and be consistent. While most of your defensive backs, uh, a lot of them are inexperienced coming in, Kalen Reed has been through the battles. Uh, how has he played this year, and, and what has it, has it meant to have him as a experienced guy? Well, the biggest thing with Kalen's keeping him healthy. Well, Kalen's a good football player. When Kalen's out on the field, he makes a difference. I mean, early in the year, I mean, creating interceptions, he's a physical player in the perimeter, but he's had some soft tissue injuries that have kept him out. So when Kalen's out there, he's our one experienced corner. Our safeties are experienced, but our, our corner position outside of that is uh, two true freshmen, two retro freshmen. So they're inexperienced, but they've gotten better. The biggest thing is keeping Kalen healthy. Kalen's a good football player, likes to play. He's a good teammate, but uh, keeping him healthy is the key. Would you say it's his physical ability, just natural talent or would it be his intelligence his football it's a combination he's a, he's a football intelligent player he's smart on and off the field he's physical he's not afraid to uh, to take risks and jump routes and that's by his preparation how he prepares that allows you to take those risks so again we're better when we have him. 
we are better. He's a better football player. So, again, uh, hopefully we'll have him this week. He wasn't able to, to finish at Middle Tennessee. We didn't have him. And that, that you, don't, you just don't have another guy you can put in there. You're going you're gonna to get exposed at times. And so, again, he's capable of making some game-changing plays and some momentum plays, big hits and interceptions that change momentum in games. At Middle Tennessee State, whenever the offense kind of got hot late in the game, uh, scoring quite a few touchdowns right in a row, I mean, is it momentum you look to build off of, uh, you know, despite the, the bye week, I guess you kind of had to sit on it for a while. But, I mean, is that something you can build off of two weeks later? I think our guys are feeling better offensively from, from starting with some things we did at Alabama, a little bit better at App, a little bit better at Rice. We just did hit some explosive plays. We had opportunities to. That would have felt a lot different. And then last week, when you look at it, just said, okay, we took, we had drops in the end zone that both led to field goals. And we had two turnovers. That's, you know, anywhere from 14 to 17 to 20 points. So I think they see that part of it, but still, at the end, still comes down to finishing drives and executing. Uh, which, again, till we get to that point, uh, we're gonna we're gonna struggle because in this league you're gonna have to score. Teams are scoring. The, the games aren't 21 to 17. No, you're gonna have to get in the 30s. You're, that, to beat the teams in our league that are good offensively. They're too good. You got too many good skill guys. Got athletic quarterbacks. You're gonna score more. With the success of the other in-state schools, um, how, how does that affect Southern Miss as far as recruiting goes? Things like that. Oh, I, you know, I mean, it's um, it depends on what side of the coin you want. First of all, let me just say this. I mean, hats off to both uh, Dan Mullen and Hugh Freeze and their programs. I mean, what awesome. I don't know what else to say, but they've done a great job. Uh, tremendous coaches, and um, it's hard to say. You know, from the one end of it, those programs are better than they've ever been. So there's certain players that when Southern Miss was winning and, and winning Carson championship, that you would have gotten those guys. They wouldn't have felt like they could win a championship there. Well, they're getting better players they've ever gotten. And the SEC, just by a league, is getting good players. Now, conversely, is they're going to get better players now. They're going to put themselves in a market where maybe they weren't before. So, again, we can only go by the guys that we have an opportunity to recruit to want to come here and play at Southern Miss. And uh, so again, I, I don't know how it affects it one way or another, but I think they've both done a great job. And, and we've got to go and recruit, try to convince players to come here and be a part of something special and bring this place back to the top.